Okay, good evening, everybody. Sorry, we're a little late. Here. I think after a year we'd have this down, but we still don't. Um, I'm just going to wait a second to see. We have um, members of our committee uh, who's here. I see we have Dennis Troy. I see have Dominic Cristino. Uh, this conference will now be recorded. Will not. Will now. We have Nick Whalen. Mm -hmm. Quite a few people. Yes. I haven't. Yes, we have another meeting tonight. Oh, okay. um, the football coach. Oh, Don Hammond's here. Mm -hmm. Sorry. We're just going to give another minute for some to see if any of our other committee members show up. Okay, it's 6.02. We'll note them that they're late if they show up after now. So I want to thank everyone for joining us tonight. Um, this is the Town of Orangetown on New York State Police Reform Committee meeting, uh, the public meeting. Um, so you, I'm just going to ask you to bear with me. I'm going to make a couple comments and um, I'm going to try, try and script, uh, share my screen because we did make some uh, additions to it um, after it was released. So I'm going to try and get that up there. But anyway, so before we really um, start opening up to the public, I just want to say a few words on how we got here and where we go from here. Oh, it's okay. I'm sorry. It's, okay, just, um, just hit cancel. I just made you the presenter. Okay, so okay. You're oh, okay. sorry about that. Um, so I'm not going to repeat everything that we've done the committee. I think we covered it in a lot of our other meetings. And if you are interested, if you go to the town website, uh, we have uh, extremely detailed minutes, uh, which include everything with all the presentations that were made, the guest speakers, the informational sessions that we had. Um, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, um, before I go any further, I do want to thank um, Chief Butterworth and Captain Shannon, um, who worked on the preliminary draft. Uh, they did so at my request, basically because they had the most knowledge about the accreditation process, the training, uh, how, how things are uh, investigated, complaints from, were investigated, um, and the policies and procedures of the police department. So um, they worked on that w in conjunction with the recommendations made by many of these committee members. And, um, and so I want to thank them for that. I also want to thank the chief for immediately instituting some changes. Um, during the process, concerns were raised about how someone files a complaint against a police officer. And um, so rather than wait for our report to be done, the chief instituted immediately an online um, system for people to file complaints without needing to come into the police department. So um, he was proactive in that respect. Um, but anyway, after the preliminary report was sent out and the one that if you've reviewed it or you have, I met with the chief and the town attorney and we added an additional section to the report. It's entitled Moving Forward um, and incorporates a few more of the recommendations that were made by some of the committee members. Um, I'm going to try and share my screen, but bear with me because I'm technically challenged. Yeah. Nope. Okay. Okay. So share. Okay. So now we should see that. Okay. Okay. So this is the new page. Um, I just wanted to, you know, again, it's been added. And it's going to be up on the website, but just for tonight's purposes, if there was things that we added, um, I wanted you to be able to see it. Um, this basically, there's other written recommendations, which, if you looked at the original filing of our plan, it is Appendix J of the report. The draft report were the written uh, recommendations, which for the most part have all been incorporated uh, into, into the draft plan that you have. Um, but so we're on the same page. This is the draft plan. Um, it is subject to change to include additional comments of any of our committee members. Um, and of course, tonight, the purpose tonight is to hear the public speak. So um, we want to uh, incorporate any, any comments that come in. Um, 
Once updated, the draft will be released again. Uh, and the, the goal is to have it approved by the town board at the meeting next uh, on the 23rd. Um, so comments can come in tonight and they can continue to come in. Uh, we have a, a dedicated email address. It's at police reform at orangetown.com. So comments can come in up until we're up till Friday at noon. Um, if they want to be included in our report or consideration our report, we need to have it by then. With that said, that email address is open uh, and can be used at any time. Um, but just if you want to get your comments on the actual report, it needs to be there by um, by Friday. So I'm not going to go through the report uh, or recommendations because we would be here all night. Um, and really, the purpose of tonight is to hear from you, um, not to hear from to hear from me. Um, but I do want to point out the one recommendation, and it's it, and it's on the screen. And it was one of my first ones, and I I personally think it's the most important one. Um, and that's why we included it in the moving forward. And that is that it's my firm belief that the town board needs to create a mechanism for continuing the work that this committee has started. Um, the town board should consider creating a new a town committee or working with a countywide committee to continue to address and respond to the issues that come up, as well as to work proactively with the community and community-based organizations, schools, and others to accomplish the goals of this plan and the executive order. I long thought that the April 1st deadline was somewhat arbitrary and that really to do this project right, there was some really heavy lifting that needed to be done. Um, and so this committee, I know, had other things they wanted to do. And we just, um, you know, they wanted to hold uh, in-person meetings in the community, you know, not not either virtually or town hall. Um, and we talked about doing a, a survey or questionnaire where people could respond uh, anonymously. But between COVID and other pressing town matters, we never really, we ran short on time and never got to it. So so I think it's really important that this process continues and so that this committee and the things they wanted to do can continue. And um, even after the, the report is, is filed, um, that we get to do these things that this committee thought was important enough to do. Um, but before opening up to the public, I'm just going to, uh, I want to say something, and this is I'm speaking completely for myself. I'm not speaking for the committee at this time. I want to just say that um, nothing in this report um, is meant, recommendation or otherwise, is meant to negatively reflect on the men and women of the Orange Sound Police Department. Um, I'm very proud of the work that they do and our police officers. However, I recognize that, you know, my view on policing uh, has been uh, shaped by my life and uh, I come of from a family of law enforcement. Um, and I always always think that there's always room for improvement. So um, I recognize that there are real um, complicated issues here that need to be uh, addressed. Um, I just wanna assure everyone that I took my responsibility as the chairperson of this committee uh, seriously. Um, and I understand the important role of this committee improving the relationship between uh, our the public and our law enforcement. So I just wanted to say that. And um, Leslie, I just want to um, note that last week we did receive the report from the Rockland People's Panel on Policing, or PPP, um, and it was shared with this committee. Everyone was provided with a copy. And at this time, I'd just like to add one additional recommendation to my list uh, of recommendations, and that is that moving forward, um, the RPPP or their steering committee um, work with whatever entity the town board creates, um, find a way to work together on this very important issue. Um, we, I did reach out. I did participate in their meetings. I think um, that working together um, is only for the betterment of everyone. So on that note, I'm going to open it up to the public. There are, we are going to institute some rules. Um, we're, we're, we're listening. We're taking comments. Uh, it's not really meant to be a debate or a back and forth or, or anything like that. We're really, we're willing to hear and to listen, but we don't want to get into any kind of uh, back and forth on this. Um, no one's required to state their name or where they're from. If they don't want to be seen, they could turn off their cameras. There's there's no uh, obligation that you identify yourself. Um, we are asking that the comments be limited to three minutes at least. Uh, uh, and so we see how many people we have that want to speak. Um, and then I just want to remind everyone that written comments can be submitted until Friday at noon. Um, again, if they want to be considered um, for the report. So on that note, I'm going to open it up to the public. And again, I'm going to ask for some patience because our system is not real. Um, I'm going to stop sharing the screen. Okay. So um, let's put that again. Okay. Where you went? Oh, you were there. Okay. 
Oh, you're probably. There we go. Okay. Okay. Um, so again, our system doesn't really have a, a raise your hand type of thing. So if anybody wants to say, are you looking to say something? You're unmuted. So John haven't. I know they unmuted me. Whenever you want uh, comments, I think probably it's more important to hear from the public. Okay. Uh, okay. Make comments after before the meeting's over. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. So if um, if anybody wants to speak, um, I guess we're gonna have to unmute everybody. Well, they can unmute themselves. Oh, they can unmute themselves. Okay. You can un unmute yourself if you like to speak. Maybe. Um, I have a comment, I, I, Teresa. Yeah, I see. Jackie, okay, I hear you. Go ahead. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to ask a couple questions. I'm coming late to this process. This is the first meeting I've been aware of to attend. Um, I want to know what are the diversity training materials that are being used um, with the police officers? And I also want to comment that I believe that the governor's resolution uh, or his directive that is being used for this reform process is a very biased directive and that it contains many things that are assumed rather than proved and that the police are under such attack all over the country that I think it's only fair to say that what, much of these reforms that are being instituted are based on assumptions about police activity, which I don't think are proved. So that's just what I wanted to say. Okay, thank you. Uh, anybody else want to speak? Oh, go ahead, Paul. Hi, uh, I'm Paul Nice. I'm a resident of South Nyack and a member of the Rockland People's uh, Policy on Policing. Can, I'm sorry for a second, Paul. Can, you, can people hear him? It sounds muffled for me. No. Oh, no, I can't hear him. Okay. Yeah, it was muffled. I don't know if you want to try again. What mic are you using, Paul? Because we can't, you're just completely muffled. Yeah. Is that any better? Yes. 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 We're not. Okay. Uh, uh, thanks for the opportunity. I just wanted to uh, say I'm a member of the Rockland People's Panel on Policing, and I really appreciate Supervisor Kenny. I've read your report, and I appreciate your transparency. I appreciate the communication you uh, engage the community with. I think it's a really substantive report, and I also appreciate your comment that you know your added recommendation is to work closely with the RPPP on a going forward basis. I think that really demonstrates good faith on your part and the rest of the committee. And I think that's the direction that's going to result in um, really substantive change and improving safety um, and reducing uh, police bias. So I, I just wanted to express my appreciation for the work you've done and your, you know, your intent in reaching across to work with the community. Thank you, Paul. Anybody else like to speak? Mm -hmm. um, Michelle hi, Hamilton. Michelle. Hi, Michelle. So, hi. And so I am also a, a resident of Orange Town, a uh, member of the Rockland People's Panel on Policing. Proudly, um, I have attended, um, a, I, I think, at least two of these meetings of the Orange Town uh, Police Reform Panel open to the public. Um, so I do thank uh, Supervisor Kenny for being very responsive to me when I emailed and asked questions. Um, those questions have been answered, so we thank you for that. Um, my, uh, I'm going to keep my message short. It's just that I, I would like to know that um, when I look at the substance of the Orangetown report, many of the things in it are things that are, um, as, as I'm reading it or understanding it, already required um, by New York state law. Um, whereas when you look at the substance of the Wrath on People's panel on policing report, it's a quite, quite different uh, report with quite, quite different recommendations. I won't list them here. The report speaks for itself. But, um, but I'd like to also um, 
along with that say that the, the substance of a report is um, in large part determined by the people who create that report. And when I look at the composition of the reform panel for Orangetown, it is very, very heavy on uh, government officials and members of law enforcement. And I only see, maybe I'm off by one or two, but uh, three members of just the general public. And I know that there have been uh, sessions for the public to comment, but even as the first speaker just said tonight, um, she wasn't even aware of those sessions till now. And so many, many people don't in the community, this is not that many, very few people will uh, be reached by these sessions, although they are important to have. There has to be other ways of outreach and other ways to include the public. So um, that's what I'd like to comment. Thank you. I was just wondering if you could speak some more. Um, my name is Mary Ellen Hurwitz, and I'm a resident of Orangetown. I just wonder if you could speak some more about the differences between the two reports. I also noticed that the composition of the Orangetown committee was not too representative of all the voices. And I'd like you to comment some more about this. So I, I started by saying we're not going to go back and forth, and so I'm going to be violating my own rule, but I will say this. I'm going to show you what I have as the governor's book here, and those little green tabs are my tabs that I went through this book page by page, and I commented. A lot of what we did was re was required, basically, or or by the governor's, or for better or worse, by what the governor said. We were required to have the district attorney's office represented. We were required to have the public defenders represented. They said you should have the police union represented. You should have the police department represented. All of them were, were recommended um, by the governor's order. Um, so I'll start with that. Uh, I'll, speaking about the reports, I, 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 I read the Rockland People's Panel on Policing's report. I read it. Um, a lot of what they say, A, is, is something that is a countywide initiative or even a statewide initiative, which I'm not disagreeing with per se, but but it's not something we can do at the local level. Um, second of all, there's things in there, and that's why I think it's so important to recognize that we want to continue going forward. There was the, the thing there about not having school resource officers. Now, I was rather surprised by that. Um, and again, that's a school district parent discussion. Um, Certainly, Orangetown is not forcing our, our police into the school district. So I, I think um, there's things in the report that need to be further investigated or looked at. And that's why I think my first point was so important, that this needs to continue. Um, it's not like April 1st is here. Here's your report. We can all close the door and move on. Um, I, I don't agree with necessarily everything in the in the RPPP report, uh, you know, but I, there's a lot I need to learn as we move forward. And um, I look forward to learning it. But um I think our committee um, did have representatives. We tried to get across the board. We did have, you know, someone, um, a pastor. We had, you know, we invited different um, community members and, and you know, everyone's always going to come after the fact and say we should have had, had more of this or that. But again, if we have a committee moving forward, those, that, that could be addressed. That could be addressed moving forward. Appreciate your recommendation that you continue and have a means of evaluating how things are going forward. That would be great. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, Michael, you want to say something? I always want to say something. Um, do you feel? Um, Trying to make you violate the not going back and forth. Um, so I, I won't I've, ask. I've that. already violated it, so why not? You know. Okay. All right. So I so I have two things. One, I appreciate you uh, saying that you know this is a beginning, not an April first deadline ending. For things to change, this has to be an ongoing process, and it's going to be slow and glacial. And everybody going in should recognize that because we can't fix hundreds of years of problems in, I don't know, I guess this has been six months or eight months of this. So I appreciate that. Um, do you feel moving forward 
if this process can continue, that it should always be tied to the budgets of municipalities, police departments? That, that's a tough one because, you know, look, I, 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 we saw the presentation from the, the new Jim Crow group on, and, and even we, we saw the presentation from the, the BART group or whatever, you know, behavioral response team. And it's clear to me that there's more money is needed. There's no doubt about it. Um, we need we need much more money towards that. Um, I don't want to say the problem, but the problem is, you know, we have we have labor unions and they have contracts and and we have budgetary issues. Um, do I think the town board recognizes these wardens of these funding these other things? Yes. Um, until something happens with the system, we have contracts in place and. Um, it's not like we could just say to the officers, we're, you know, we're cutting your salary because we need something more on mental health. So um, I, I, I try to separate the two. I think we need more funding for the mental health issue. Um, I, I think that's a countywide initiative. And that's why I think I said in my comment, I think that whatever new committee it is, may, maybe should be a committee, a county committee, either representatives from each town or whatever, but it needs to be something that's um, countywide. A lot of those initiatives, I think, are either statewide or countywide. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think, I think they're related, but I like to almost view them separately as far as we have contracts with our law enforcement and we have to abide by them and we need to come up with more money for, um, mental health response. There's no doubt about it. Um, I think all parties agreed to that, that there's more, much more needed uh, on that front. Thanks. I'm sorry, I don't see your name, so I can't call your name, but wearing the white sweater. <laughs> Leslie, okay. Hi, I'm Leslie. Um, first of all, Supervisor Kenny, I, I would like to say thank you for uh, structuring these meetings in a way that provided transparency and the residents of Orangetown the ability to understand what this mandate entails and how the um, police department is going to implement these changes. Um, so I have a, a comment or two and uh, a question. Um, so I, um, the, the, where am I going with this? Um, over, so I believe that this process, um, even though it's a mandate, um, mandates as I believe as adults at times is not something that we take, um, that, that we appreciate. So therefore, um, it's a, a process that we're going through and I know that it's a requirement and we, um, as a town are going to make sure that we provide legislators with whatever the information is that they're requiring. But I, you know, I want to I want to talk more about beyond the mandate and um, understanding that there will be steps in place to make sure that we are aligned with the requirements. But looking at stepping back from the state and looking at this from um, a community standpoint and the the town of Orange Town and how we um, can improve the interactions of um, uh, residents with police, with the town, with the school. So seriously building some connections here. Um, I, I do believe that, I, I stand firmly in believing that change within the police department is required. And that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm saying that we have problems with our local police department, but I think that we always need to look at how individuals are doing business and how people are being treated. And especially when um, the voices that feel like they are not being treated equally are um, smaller in this, in this town, it's a smaller percentage than in other locations. So um, I had the pleasure a few years ago of attending a People's Institute Undoing Racism training 
and um, interacting with Orangetown police officers that were in the training. And that was a great opportunity for me as a resident of South Orangetown to get to know um, how the officers felt or perceived racism in general. And it was nice to see that the police department took the time out to send officers to this training. So my question, and I don't know if Chief Butterworth is on this call, but my question to the police is, um, is there any um, future considerations to continue providing this training to the officers? And I'm gonna go a step further and say, can a recommendation be placed where the officers that are new are required to take this training and any officer that has not taken the training in the past is also required to go back and take it. And, and, and the last comment that I have is um, when you started off by mentioning that there is going to be a town committee going forward, I think that that is valuable uh, because there's work that's being done on the school district side where equity committees, uh, equity coalition has been formed this year, September, where we're talking about inclusion and equity. And sometimes I think some of the issues that are occurring that have required this mandate within the police department has a lot to do with the unfortunate situations where people don't see people as humans, as equal, and therefore they are in some cases um, put in situations where they are not treated equally. So with that said, as you move forward with this town committee, my hope is that we bring together um, a foundation that creates a more inclusive community where everyone, police, regardless if you're a police officer or not, we see each other in a human sense so that we can feel more comfortable having conversation, basic conversations with each other and treating each other with more respect. Thank you. I want to let, I will let the chief respond in a minute, but I just wanted to, I, I think you said it much more eloquently than I did, but one of my comments was, um, and is in the moving forward is talking about community policing. And I know that word has a lot of different meanings. Um, and I, I, I was using it in the context of involvement, not necessarily policing, but just maybe being more involved in events, local events. I, and again, this comes back to budgetary, going back to what Michael Lockett said, but I understand there was a community policing uh, uh, component of the police department that it, when funds got low, they they cut it out. But um, I think that plays into it. But again, I want the community involved in how much they want, how they want it, where they want it, when they want it. Um, so that, you know, um, we're not imposing ourselves, but yet, you know, they're, they are a part of the community. So that's where I was kind of trying to get with that. I don't know if I got there, but that was the goal of that. Um, I can certainly let that, the chief is here if he wants to add in at all. Hello, uh, Leslie, I appreciate your question. I think it's very valuable. Um, we've incorporated some of that in the academy training that they're getting now, both in service and recruit training. Um, we have sent people in 2020, it's in the report, to be instructors in procedural justice, where we're going to look to get all our officers through that. Um, the academy, every officer we send to a, a one-day uh, instruction on that, where they get uh, state certification on that from the academy. Um, and we are always looking to do additional training and bringing a lot of that training that we get, whether it's in de-escalation de and things like that, into all our training, whether it's our use of force or just instruction on, on uh, legal issues, we try and bring that training in. And that's something that we've started over the past, you know, three or four years, but especially with the academy class in 
August of last year, it started getting uh, to be more inclusive of everybody that goes to the academy now. So uh, I know we do also have the Center for Safety and Change is uh, coordinating with the academy this coming year and moving forward to get some training that way from their uh, group, which I think can help. But uh, any type of training that we can get that we can keep, uh, probably more importantly, teaching it, but then reinforcing is probably the most important where we do it on a yearly continuous basis and try and bring it into all our training, where it's not just you sit down one day and get it. It needs to be uh, uh, inclusive in, in a lot of our different trainings. And, and that's where I think it sticks uh, to the officer better if they, if they see it more often. So I do appreciate that question. I think it's very valuable. Thank you. I, I would just like to add, and I appreciate the um, reply. I would just like to add that I know that some of the officers that attended that training with me are still active in the department. And I would just ask that maybe you reach out to them and get their feedback on the um, training themselves. Because from my standpoint and, and listening to the feedback within the class, it really did feel like the officers got a lot of information out of the undoing racism training. And as a community member, I felt like it, it, it felt really good to see that um, it was important to train officers in South Orange Town uh, around uh, undoing racism. Um, so I, I just, that's just my feedback on the issue. Um, and I would hope that that type of training or that specific training is not eliminated from your list of training that's offered to your officers. Well, I'd like to ask the question again that I asked before. And that is, what is the nature of this training? What is the source of the curriculum? Who are the people that are presenting this training? What is the information that they're relying on? To okay, I'm going to have to interrupt you. you uh, we have other people who haven't spoken yet. Um, and so I'm going to just let them have a chance to speak. Um, but I still like and, that question answered because I asked it when I first spoke and it wasn't right. answered. And I, I also started by saying we were going to do back and forth. And I, and I also said if you go to our minutes, you will see we had... Um, we had presentations from the police academy. We had, um, we've had, you know, we spent hours on this and, and is it, and it but is. But they aren't minutes. available, um, Teresa, to those of us who couldn't get to these meetings. And it's, it's well, fine to read things, but it's not the same as being part of it. Okay. So I'm just going to let somebody else who hasn't had a chance to speak yet and we, we can come back and I can certainly let the chief address it, but I just want to give everyone a chance. So uh, Jessica Goodman um, message that she wants to speak. Jessica, can you unmute yourself or do we have to unmute you? Okay, hi, okay. can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. So I, I'm a resident of, of Orange Town and I also, um, like Leslie, have attended the Undoing Racism training. And I also have continued on a monthly basis since attending that training. Uh, attended a community meeting where folks can join once a month. Now they have them, I think, every week um, to continue the learning. Um, because I think as several folks have said, including the chief, how important it is not just to have training about racism and, and understanding its roots and, and where it appears, but also that that learning is continued to be reinforced over time. And I believe that the officers that Leslie mentioned attended the training, did attend several of those ongoing community meetings uh, in which I was at attendance. And so I think if you were to ask them, they might also say how valuable that ongoing learning is in the process of really unpacking and, and understanding how racism can impact so many things. Uh, that we all experience every day. So I, I just wanted to comment that uh, first, but then also to reflect on what some others have said as well, that um, you know, having a, uh, a, a very representative group be engaged in this conversation over time is incredibly important. And I'm, I'm grateful to hear that that is part of the 
uh, I guess, uh, or I hope, <laughs> it sounds like we're talking about that being a part of the conversation uh, ongoing. So yes. it's a recommendation yet to the town board. So I have a little influence over some of them. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> um, anybody who hasn't spoken, if you want to put in the comment that you want to speak, I'd like to give everybody at least. I don't know what to put the comments. Rena, okay, go ahead. Okay, I just want I want to second what the last two speakers um, <clears throat> said, and uh, I think that that um, this type of training is very very valuable, and I and I don't think that saying this is an indictment of the Orange Town Police. I believe you know implicit racism is is uh, is all all throughout uh, the the community, and and it does it does impact very often. Of uh, the the actions uh, of of the police, as it does a, lo a lot of people in the community, but I just would like to um, to also say um, I, I congratulate you as you know on on your, the, your all the work that you did. I was a member of I am a member of the um, RPPP and also of the uh, mental health committee of the Rockton Coalition uh, and. Um, so you were very, you were very generous. You, you actually, uh, we, we did speak, and I saw. I looked. You, you have extensive minutes from all the meetings, and we did have an opportunity to speak. And uh, you have incorporated uh, as as best you could, given given the um, the uh, community resources that we now have, and if there's going to be some of our recommendations are dependent on a countywide actions. Uh, for, for instance, the the cahoots team, and um, and I'm I'm happy that you you are inviting RPPP to to uh, be a part of your town committee, and I hope that our committee as well. And the because the the uh, the final answer to all, to your recommendations is how they are implemented, and this does not happen in in a day. It takes it takes time, and um, and and we appreciate your your providing those opportunities. Uh, Thank you, Rita. Thank you. Okay, I see. I don't know, um, Michelle Lockett. Hi, I think Jackie Dressler was before me though in the chat, so I would give her a chance if she's still okay. on the phone. How polite of you! I saw her name before me. <laughs> okay, Sorry. Jackie. That's okay. Michelle, you could go, and then I can go. Thank you. Okay, sure. Um, hi, it's Michelle Lockett. I'm an Orangetown resident, also a member of RPPP. Um, Teresa, I appreciate you joining all of our meetings. I think it was really helpful to have you there. Um, I would just like to make a comment that I would recommend that Orangetown actually consider a true o civilian oversight committee so that we can actually look into what is happening in policing versus just um, having some investigations that are peripheral, right? And it's in the RPP. P recommendation is for that committee to really have true subpoena power, because if it doesn't happen overall at a Rockland level, I still think that it would be important to have it at the, the local Orangetown level so that people can feel that there's a connection and that there is a way to um, have some sort of oversight of the, um, the police department will be the third or fourth person to say that I recommend anti-racism training, but I'm just putting that as my public comment. Um, and that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I think Jackie's yeah. next. Thank you very much. Um, so now that Michelle and Rena have spoken, I don't need to speak, but <laughs> actually I do. Um, same thanks for having your meetings and having them be fairly open, especially compared to some of the other um, towns. Um, that's very much appreciated. And as a member of the Robin Coalition and the New Jim Crow Mental Health Committee, we were glad for the opportunity to do a presentation. Um, and as a member of the Rockland People's Panel on Policing, I'm very glad that you have the report. It's, um, it's a report that has some very terrific recommendations that will take a very long time to put into place or to undo things put them into place. However, I wanted to just talk about uh, two things that were in your report. Um, one was regarding BERT. And I just have to say that 
um, you know, we did a presentation to the Rockland County Legislature a week or two ago, and um, there's still some misinformation about BERT that they they don't come with police, they do, and that they're 24 seven. They're not 24 seven, really. They're from eight in the morning till midnight, and then they're only by phone. Um, so I just want you to be aware that there's some things, I mean, it's not out and out lies. It's just not exactly what is the truth. Um, so, and I, I just also wanted to say that I, I was happy to see in your report that there was a mention of the police academy and training and mental health and they're adding in an extra day and um, all sorts of things like that. It said something about working with the Rockland Coalition to end the new Jim Crow Mental Health Committee. And I, I don't know that we've been approached by anyone from the police academy. I know Christopher Stratner is the head of that, but we definitely do want to put it out there that we're very happy to help in any way that we can. Um, and many of the members of our group have vast mental health experience. Um, and as a matter of fact, used to do training at the police academy. So I do hope that we can have some more involvement. I'm not a member of Orangetown anymore, but I kind of wish I was. Um, and it's a great, great place. And this process is long and hard and it's going to continue long and hard because there's a lot of work to do. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Is there anybody else who hasn't spoken that would like a chance to speak? Are there any comments on Facebook or anything that need to be? Well, Don no. Hyman wants to speak. Oh, okay. Don, you want to speak? <laughs> She's Allison is screwing with you. Okay. Come on, Allison. <laughs> stop that. I'm unmuting and you're muting me. <laughs> and I'm muting and you're unmuting. <laughs> Supervisor Kenny, I first want to thank you by um, asking me to serve on, on the Orangetown Committee. Um, I think I've been to every meeting but one, have given feedback and, and, and thoughts, and I have deep, deep respect and a great working relationship with Chief Butterworth and with the rest of the Orangetown police officers and staff and watch the way they serve our communities in many ways and really, really respect them for that. This is an ongoing process. I think that's really important, the recommendation that you made. I'd like to add, if, if I'm going to endorse this to the, to the town board, I'd like to add some things that sort of start forming an agenda for that committee. And there are recommendations that were, were made um, by myself. Um, some of them have been mentioned already. The first is about um, exploring civilian oversight opportunities, how we do that. Um, community policing ideas and strategies, uh, diversity, both training. Um, I think some of the things that have been said that how important it is to not do it just in a police academy training, but to do it with the community so that you're interacting about diversity and racism within the community, not just amongst yourselves. I found that to be a really important part of the process. I'd also like to see us look at how do we diversify our, our um, the makeup of our of our um, police force and law enforcement. Um, and again, not saying I, I want to emphasize that how much respect I have for for all of our police officers and the work they do in our community. But I think we really have an opportunity through this um, through this report and through this process that goes forward to change the culture and expectations of what we have as a community. Uh, and how we work with our police force. And that's why I'm saying these things. Another piece I'd like to see added as part of the agenda is how do we use the data on arrests, um, convictions and bail and things like that, that we know are out there. How do we use that to inform the, our, our strategies and policing strategies and, and community strategies? Because this is, in my view, this is beyond just policing. It's really how do we integrate our communities together to make them uh, safer places and places where we can all enjoy living together? So I have to go to uh, to another meeting to um, endorse some legislation on restaurants. So forgive me for having to leave and sort of talking and then bailing, but 
I'll be here for 10 more minutes and then I need to leave for that meeting. But I'd like to see that added into your recommendation that we have some agenda items for that for that committee and that it not just be that it be considered, but that the town board um, adopt a resolution to have a committee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, both of our comments made it to Appendix J. So I, you know, some of mine moved out of the appendix and some of yours still stayed in the appendix. Our, we, Don and I both had written recommendations and slowly we moved them to the, to the report. So um, good, good. Um, so let me see any good. Uh, okay, anybody else want to speak? I don't know, Chief, do you want to take a crack at it? I'm sorry, there was a question early up uh, on about training, but it's been so while now, I don't really remember what, exactly what it was. Mm -hmm. Mary Ann, you had the question. If you just want to repeat it real quick, we have a couple minutes, maybe the Chief can take a shot at it. I would like to know, what are the what is the basis for this training in terms of what curriculum, what sources are being used to determine what is taught? And I have in particular a question about Robin D'Angelo and Ibram Kendi and whether any of those people, either of those people is, um, in, you know, considered a, a, an underpinning or a source of this information. Uh, some of those questions would be better presented to the police academy staff, but we do at the academy, if you look in the report in Appendix L and Appendix M does have some of the curriculum that we go through with training at the academy. But as far as the source in that, I don't have that information for you tonight. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anybody else? So I'm just going to remind everybody that, um, again, the, the email address is open, policereform at orangetown.com. Um, again, you can comment at any time if you have any concerns or questions. Uh, but again, if it wants to be... Um, Consider for the report, we need to have it by Friday because we're we're narrowing in on that April 1st deadline. So um, let me see. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, on that note, if there's no one else that wants to say anything, I want to thank you for your time. Um, it is it is very important. And um, and your comments will be will be considered. So thank you. Have a good night, thank everybody. You. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Teresa. Thank you. Thank you. Captain. Everyone be safe and have a good night. Thank you. Night all. Night. How, how do I get out of here? Leave. Hit the leave button on the bottom right. Oh, I don't. <laughs>